walk around the compound, see some tigers, and maybe some peats. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi, sugar pie. Hi, baby. <coughs> yeah, I know. I know, baby. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that uh, a lot of you saw the announcement that was made, I believe, uh, yesterday. Should have been. But uh, for those of you who haven't, Clyde is no longer with us. Despite, uh, despite our best efforts, he kept on fading. He kept on fading away. He's suffering. Even though he just had a, he had a good disposition, and he had a good, good strong chin about him. We decided to uh, put him to sleep, and his suffering. Um, opened him up afterwards, you know, did a necropsy, and th so far this is, you know, like, we really don't know anything, so the only things that we've observed are circumstantial and speculative at best, but, um... Yeah, there were some things as far as his organs were concerned. Uh, his kidneys looked a little bit enlarged, which could definitely have been indicative of some sort of kidney malfunction, some sort of kidney disease. His liver didn't look particularly great. His lungs didn't look good. His heart was uh, a little bit small. Um, so yeah. There were, uh, there were a few things, and we think that, uh, possibly he had some, uh, some genetic chips kind of stacked up against him, I mean, throughout the course of his life, and that he, uh, I mean, this is just me kind of speculating that he probably didn't have as much sand in his hourglass as some of the other cats. I mean, you know, you saw him. I know, baby. He was a he was that stumpy bulldog guy, stumpy bulldog tiger. I mean, he looked adorable trying to run around, but you know, I mean, tigers probably shouldn't look like that. And also, he was very sedentary, so that could uh, also be. Uh, like if he has a, if he had a smaller than normal heart, that could have played a role as well. You know, he, he got easily tired. He got easily, maybe if he got easily tired or easily winded, then that just automatically put him, um, at an, at a deficit. <laughs> Made it so that his organs were just a little bit more likely to, to give out. He, uh, his car parts, you know, some of them, like, they didn't, they, they weren't made in, in Tokyo. Like, they, a lot of them were made, like, in Chechnya, it seems like. <laughs> Hi, bud. <laughs> Hi, Papa. Hi, mister. I know that a lot of you folks, um, you, I think a lot of you folks were kind of anticipating it, you were expecting it. And of course, you know, to actually have that information now definitively presented is, that's difficult. I get that. So I'm sorry. 
I know that there's a lot of you who probably didn't see the announcement and you're first hearing about this news now in the webcast. Yano! 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 Alright. Oh! oh. <laughs> What's this? Yano, come here. Yano, there's some people that are probably uh, kind of sad right now. You think that maybe you can come over here and be kind of derpy? Maybe get some people cheered up a little bit? Or are you just going to keep on just eating grass and just being weird? Hey! <laughs> Hi, bud. Yeah. That's Yano giving everyone a hug. That's Yano giving everyone a hug, saying it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, Clyde was almost 15 years old. Almost 15 years old. And... <sighs> yeah. Another one of our... Well, I wouldn't say he was geriatric, but he was older. He was older. He was upper middle age. Another one of them is, you know, gone. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Oh. Hello, all you big cat lovers out there. It's me, Derek. Pin. Welcome to another super duper fantastic walk around the compound webcast. Hi, Mr. Yano. I'm going. Look at this handsome guy. Ooh, such good light. Oh, look at the light. The light of Yano. This is very, uh, aura. I'm doing some captures. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was nice. Oh, put some oil on that gate. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, with, with, with everything with happening with Clyde and everything, it's, yeah, it's been difficult and it's, you, you kind of have to put some things kind of on hiatus. Oh, what do we got going on over here? We got little Bob Kitties being cute. Oh, look at that. Double roll. Double roll. Oh. See, if I go over there and I try to film from the other side of the fence to actually get close, like high resolution look of their cuteness they will stop being cute and then they will hiss at me and give me hisses bob kittas look at those cute little bob kittas yeah so when you're when you're trying to pull out all the stops to take care of sick cats you know you gotta yeah other stuff kind of goes on hiatus like uh you know, animating uh, <laughs> videos to uh, try to uh, illustrate the uh, campaign to. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, what was? It's again. I there's something about it. Oh, it's like she's still here. You know, it's like she's still here. Oh gosh. It's like this enclosure just is, is permeating with just like the essence of Cassie. But, uh, oh, there's a little Bobby. Little Bobby. Okay, see you later. See you later. <sighs> More cats. More cats. Getting old, getting sick. And that's just the way it goes. Look at that pretty girl. Look at that pretty girl, Miss Selena. Pretty girl, Miss Selena. Yeah. Hi, baby. You can go check and see Wally. Hey, Wally. Hey, bud. Oh, stretch. Big stretch. <gasps> Hi, Mr. Man. Oh, my goodness. 
Yeah, you're a handsome boy. You're a handsome boy. Yeah. Handsome boy. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Look at that. Let's see if we can get a little bit. Oh, capture, capture. Yeah. Capture. Hmm. What? That is not a peaceful and beautiful moment. You broke that. That was you. That was you that did that, not me. Not me. I was being very nice. It's being very nice and very sweet. You drew, you drew first blood. You drew first kill. <gasps> Noe. Noe. Hi, baby. Blink, 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 blink. Come here, baby. You wanna come over and say hi? I know, it's been hot. Oh. Yeah, it's been hot. Like, it's, it's like the second, we're in the second half of September, and, uh, you know, we're getting temperatures, like, still in, like, the mid-upper 90s. It's just a bunch of malark. Boy, I tell you. Um... But, uh, no, I've, uh, I've got a lot of, like, really, uh, I've been putting some, I've been putting ideas down, and I've been creating the, uh, um, the response, uh, videos, the, uh, the, the second portion of the cartoon, and I realized that I'm probably going to have to actually, um, break it up, I think, into, like, three separate parts, um, because like what I've like written and then like what it's gonna technically take me or the the technical elements of uh doing it, it's gonna yeah. Probably needs to be put into three parts. Ace 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 Does not care. Does not care. Oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> you you Ugh, evil. <sighs> so, yeah. You know that, um... That, uh... The end part of the last webcast. It was really dark, and you could barely... You could barely see. And I went and I talked to Clyde. That was the last time that I... Uh, ever talk to him. Um, I had to leave, I had to to go, um, travel to where I work, and uh, the, uh, the final Hail Mary for like medicine and like pumping him full of different things with like steroids and vitamins and that final like try like was unsuccessful and he was uh you know Heidi made the decision to to have him put to sleep a few days later um and that's why I was gone and that's and here's the thing you know there's a lot of cats where I can't you know I can't always be there but it's not about me it's about them it's about what they need and you make decisions based off of that and would I would I rather be present, you know, during the last moments? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's without a question. Wait, he just like stopped and then he just like, Looch, Looch, Looch. <laughs> what? What is up with that? Lucha Lou! Ah. This is Lucha, there's JP. There's Jake. Luca's on the other side. Luchi. So there's been a lot of times, you know, where you gotta 
yeah, you got to say your goodbyes because the circumstances would dictate that you are not going to be there, you know, when their heart beats its last beat. Hmm. Jake, Jake, Jake. Looch. All right. Well, if you're not going to stop and try to say hi to me, then I'm not going to stop and try to degrade myself by saying hello to you. I am not desperate. I am not a desperate man. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I will say, ooh, we got a tiger up there. And let's see. Oh, geez, that's really bright. Trying to get the right shot. Ah, okay. Now that's okay. I don't want your attention right now. <laughs> oh yeah. Capture, capture, capture. Very cool. Very cool. Oh yeah. Very good. That was Mr. Peaser. Looking handsome. Looking handsome. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was one of those kind of things where I, cause I, just before, um, I started filming this, Heidi and I, we had to go and pick up a cow. We had to pick up a cow that had, um, died, uh, and this is over at the, the sale barn, and, and there's, they're some of the only people that we actually pick, pick up, because they've been very good friends of ours, uh, in the facility for many years, so we will always make an exception, or not, just, but almost, almost always we'll make an exception to go pick up from, from them, so we went to go pick it up, and Heidi and I were spending some time and talking and doing stuff like that, and and, uh, and, uh, yeah, it was, uh, we, we, uh, we were talking and just about just, you know, people, just mutual acquaintances. And then she says, oh, so-and-so died. Like a person that, you know, uh, that we knew and has been a part, and older individual, but a person that has been a part of our lives, especially more, more so Heidi's life, um, here in the local area. And it's just like, ah, oh, geez. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's unexpected. I know. And it's just like that, uh, that one song that, uh, that Time Marches On. That uh, country song? It's a good one. It's a good song. I can't remember who sings it. But, uh, you know, that Time Marches On. You know that one? Time marches on. It's a good one. It tells a story just about, you know, these different chapters of the of the life of this, uh, you know, the, the the narrator of the song, and uh, different stages that uh, him and his sister and his brother and his mom and his dad are in. And uh, yeah, it's a really it's a touching song, and it kind of captures like a lot of these different milestones of, you know, just uh, an average, you know, person's just life, just, you know, growing up and struggling and working and, and then eventually fading, going away. And the whole time, just time marches on, it has this, has this just consistent beat throughout the throughout the song this this consistent marching beat it's a good song it's from the uh, early mid 90s I think but yeah and uh, yeah that's it's life it's life it just keeps going on and, you know, it's, you, I guess, because everyone's got their own different interpretation of, like, what that actually means. And, like, 
what, what sort of meaning comes from it. Because you could be completely cynical. You could be completely, absolutely, uh, nihilistically cynical. And you could even go so far as to say, look, the, the universe is expanding and it keeps on getting further and further apart. And if you look at um, the laws of physics, we're eventually going to be reaching a state of entropy where uh, all of the elements of the universe are going to be dispersed and the energy is going to be dissipated. And the molecules are just going to be just floating and cold and dead. That's, that's billions and billions and billions of years. There's Taylor and there's Chantel taking care of kitties, taking care of the facility. Some people, they look at that stuff and then they say like, well, that's just, that's just a reason right there. That's a reason right there to, to, to just point, point at that and say like, see, that's why nothing matters. That's why, that's why nothing uh, in this world, you know, means anything. But I, I don't, I just, I just don't, I don't think that's true. And maybe that's because, you know, we're, we're biologically hardwired to um, enable and ensure our own survival um, and the survival of our children so that we can continue to pass on our genes, the survival of our, of our ideas. So that could just be biological uh, wiring saying like, no, 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 you have to keep marching on. You have to keep marching forward because this is how you are. This is how you are programmed. And then you logically look at it and like, yeah, but what happens if we just keep on going towards that state of entropy? People, they look at that and then they, they, they give it, they give that, 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 that's what gives them cause to say that things don't matter. I just, I don't, I don't see it that way. But I think part of it, and part of the journey, and like, I don't got, I don't, I don't have answers. I'm still, I'm still searching for meaning myself. You know, and I, there was like a lot of times when, you know, of course, you're like a young person, like a teenager, and you think you know so much. You think you just know everything. I will tell you, Father, my ideas and my philosophies of the world, and I will have you know that I have come across some remarkable breakthroughs about the nature of things, philosophy in general. Yes. Let this 17-year-old tell you all about it. <laughs> but... You know, the older you get, the more you realize how much you don't know about stuff. But then there's, there's, I don't know, sometimes there's more wonder and more possibility just in that. And then also, like, a lot of times, you know, just sometimes the, 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 the simpler, the simpler your aims and the simpler your goals just become. Just do good. Make good impact. Be a good person. Love your family. And just try to find, try to find meaning. And find, and then your your personal sense of meaning doesn't have to match and jive with everyone else's. But what is it that you like? What drives you? You know, and and, and then strip away all of the external elements of it and 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 find the things that are that that are that motivate you to do like you take inventory of the things that you just do in your life and then ask yourself why do I do these things and then strip it down to the core elements of those things and then focus on those and then build from there and you know maybe maybe that's a way to do it to try to find meaning deeper understanding to stave away the existential dread of living in this world and then there's also a lot of times I, I just will naturally be more inclined to just take an FU attitude to a lot of that stuff where it's just like I'm kicking I'm breathing I can make a difference. 
so I will. Even if it ultimately does mean, you know, that the physical particles and everything like, who, I, who cares about what's going to happen billions of years from now? Don't use that as an excuse to just not care about stuff. Maybe because you got hurt at some point. That's what a lot of times people who who say that there's the world is meaningless and there's darkness and sadness. It's because a lot of times they're just people that are hurt. I'm not saying that that's all. Some people just that's just that's just those are just the values that they just have. I think a lot of people who say that there's not much meaning, they you know, people who battle with pain and depression, sadness. And then they they kind of use that you know they use nihilism almost as this crutch as a uh, as a way to rationalize not wanting to care about things so that maybe they don't get hurt again it's um yeah there's like self defense kind of things I think I th elements and I'm not again because people are complex creatures and not every person who exhibits these types of thoughts or behaviors sorry chompers hi <laughs> that was rude that was rude of me I'm talking about nihilism and chompers is sitting here saying hello and I am being so rude so rude he's like I don't care about that Derek the whole point of this webcast is you talking about trying to find meaning in the moment while well, the moment is happening right here. I was snuffling at you in this moment. I have only so many snuffles to give. You know what, Choppers? Thank you very much for teaching me an important lesson. I have only so many snuffles to give. Make them count. People that you love in your life. It's only going to be so many times that you're ever going to hug them. There's a number on that. Think about that. Sorry to kind of mess you up a little bit, but it's true. Someday at the end of it, you are going to be able to make a tally of the number of hugs, the number of bickering arguments that you've had, the number of kisses, the number of well-wishing phone calls, text messages, the number of times you're gonna be able to sit down and have dinner with a person. There's a number to those things. None of us actually know what that number's gonna be. Well, in cer um, certain circumstances, sure. You know, you go on a bad date with a person, like one time, and you're like, okay, we're only gonna do one of these. And then it is off to never see you again town. <laughs> Excuse me. And no, the people that you love, the people that you care about, there's a number. There's a number of all that stuff. Make them count. That's all I can say. Find meaning. Find purpose. And it doesn't have to be these large... Look, you know what? I like to talk about you know, big concepts and big ideas. But most of the time, this stuff is just simple. Life doesn't have to be so complicated. Yeah. Find the things you like. Focus on the things you like. Find the people that you like. Focus on them. Do good. Ha! Brothers. Eat good food, laugh a lot. Don't take yourself so seriously. Just, there you go. Whoa, whoa. We just put, we, we me and JD, we cut a tree down in my yard and uh, we're putting wood, we're putting the 
uh, branches inside the enclosures of Varali and Zuby. We also put one inside uh, Bloom and Slade's enclosure. And look at them. They are just like, it is new, it smells different, it's got bark, it is awesome. Simple pleasures, simple pleasures. I am finding reasons to enjoy life. That's actually a very, that's a salient point. I am finding reasons to enjoy life. A lot of times, and I'm not, I'm not trying to, because I, it was sometimes people, they, they misconstrue this, you know, like, just smile. You know, when you talk to like, actual, like truly depressed people, just smile, just, be, just try to feel better. But a lot of times, like depression doesn't just happen. It starts over a long period of time. And, and you, you put yourself like into like this, well, maybe not you don't put yourself, but like you can find yourself in this dark place over the course. <laughs> Hi. You can find yourself in a really dark place um, as a result of being, uh, you know, I guess through a succession of uh, different uh, things and uh, neural connections and neural pathways that form. Uh, sometimes it take weeks, months, years, and then it's a slow process. And all of a sudden you find like, I'm a really miserable person. That happens. But for, 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 for a lot of people, you can look at it more as like, I, you know, I am not, I am, I am taken over by feelings <laughs> of crappiness or or feelings of of glumness or gloominess and again i'm not talking about like full-blown clinical depression i'm talking about some of the precursors some of the things that lead up to it a lot of times it can be broken down to i will make the conscious choice to try to have a good attitude and to try to be happy and to try to change my thought process because I've talked about this before, your thoughts make your brain and your brain makes your thoughts. Like the way you think over long periods of time, successively, the way that you think, that has a direct impact on the formation uh, of your neural connections and your neural pathways. If you choose to think and approach situations in a more positive manner, if you actively choose to do this, Eventually, the neural pathways inside of your brain will become more aligned and oriented towards being generally more positive. That'll be the first place that you go. If you choose to indulge in the darkness, in the sadness, in the depression, well, over time, that's where, that's the first place you'll go. That's where you go. And there, there is, there is some truth to that, you know. And I'm not saying if you have legitimate like sadness and depression and everything. Not, I'm not saying just like just pretend to be happy. That's not what I mean. But like, just try, try to see the good situations try to understand that there is good there is meaning there is purpose but you have to find it it's the easy thing a lot of times it's the cheap thing to say that there's no good and nothing matters it's more difficult to say that there's meaning and to say that things matter for some people, at least. But I can tell you the the overall healthier attitude and the healthier life and the better disposition comes from the meaningful path as opposed to the non-meaningful path. I've walked both. I've walked both. I can tell you. I can tell you which one I would much rather be on. So, there you go. Alright, 
I've rambled enough. <sighs> Love you, Clyde. Miss you, bud. Stumpy Bulldog Man. <sighs> Stumpy Bulldog Tiger with third party parts. <laughs> we sent off some uh, some different things to get tested and analyzed, and once we have some more information, we'll of course pass that on. But, uh, you know. Anyway. I'll talk to you folks later, okay? Bye-bye.